This week on Dirt Every Day, we're gonna show you how to take a giant motorhome and turn it into a giant man-sized go-kart. This week on Dirt Every Day, we're gonna build a giant go-kart out of a motorhome. You probably remember a previous episode where we took a motorhome, we had the off-road guys from the Poly Goats come over here and help us chop it all up. We threw the whole body and house of the motorhome in the dumpster, and now we have a chassis with a 454 big block, turbo 400, and a dually rear axle. What we're gonna do is we're gonna make this chassis into a giant go-kart. This is the go-kart that we're kind of basing our whole build up off of. It has a motor in the back, ours had a motor in the front. It has a roll bar made out of square tube. We should probably have a roll bar. There's gonna be a bunch of wires and cables running around because this also has a brake pedal and a throttle pedal. We are gonna do something similar. So we're still gonna to have to run all these cables and pulleys and gear shifters and everything back and forth so we can actually control the thing. Start it, stop it, shift it, steer it. Those are the four S's. There might be some other S's in there that I can't think of right now. What we're doing with this motorhome is not exactly safe. You probably shouldn't duplicate this at home. We got a lot of crazy stuff to pull off and we better get to work. <laughs> To mount our seat to the frame rail, first I took some two by four rectangular tubing, cleaned the ends, cut them down to length, and welded them right to the frame rail. Now I'm gonna take a piece of metal, span this distance so we can mount the seat right to it. This is our piece of metal that I found out behind the shed. It's kind of rusty, sharp, and dangerous, much like me, rusty, sharp, and dangerous. gonna be perfect. Uh, we're gonna need a roll cage right about here. But now I know how tall the seat is gonna be so we can build the roll cage off of that. Throttle pedal, shifter, steering wheel. A few more steps and we'll be peeling out. The next step on my go-kart is the roll bar. Now the roll bar is pretty important because if you roll over, you don't wanna die. Now the things I've learned over the years of building 4x4s is that if your roll bar, your roll cage is designed right, you can almost build it out of anything. You could build it out of pipe, but you really probably shouldn't. You could build it out of square tube, which is also not a good idea, or you could build it out of round tube, which is really the right way to do this. I invited my friend Frank up here. Now Frank is an engineer. He's not the type of engineer that drives a train, he's the type of engineer that helps design things at work. So Frank, what do you think of my go-kart? Oh, jeez. <laughs> it's gonna be awesome. You're gonna have such a good time. My friend Frank is an engineer who used to work for a big automotive performance company. But about five years ago, he dove into a swimming pool and broke his stupid neck. Frank and I used to do a bunch of projects together, all types of stupid stuff. We were always building stuff or talking about cool 4x4 projects we wanted to build someday. Frank doesn't get to cut and grind and weld as much as he used to, but he's always willing to stop by and heckle me, laugh at my fabrication skills, and drink my beer while I work. You know, with friends like Frank, you can build just about anything. Okay, Frank, so here's my driver's seat. Got it. Engine's way up there. So I feel like we should have a roll bar that kinda is like this, it goes over top of me. Sit in it, how tall are you over the seat? Uh, like that. 
So six inches. Six inches above the seat? Six inches above the seat. So, what do you think, about that high? That'll work. Should I do two kickers or just one big kicker all the way down to the back? One big kicker. I was thinking a cross member back there in case we need to put a toe strap on it, get pulled out. You'll never get stuck. You got a big block, you'll be fine. That's a good point. I'm glad I brought an engineer. I'm gonna start chopping metal. So the inside of the frame here is covered with some old undercoating and it doesn't grind off very well. It just clogs up the grinding wheel. So I'm gonna heat it up with this torch and scrape it off. You gotta be a little bit careful because right there is a giant fuel tank full of 87 octane. That's safe, isn't it, Frank? Yeah, yeah I wouldn't worry. I wouldn't worry either. I don't worry. The most dangerous dirt every day ever. I hope my mom doesn't watch this. That thing looks hella crooked. Whatever. What? <laughs> looks industrial to me. That's a, all the cool kids like that industrial. these days. Industrial. That's the term. That's what I meant. That thing looks hella industrial. I've had so many people tell me how to build a go-kart out of a motorhome. Which is strange to me because I can't even find the online forum of motorhomegokarters.com. You need to put the engine in the back and the seat in the front. You got to do this. It's got to have a that. And armor, and armor, and armor, and armor. I'm like, really? No, you need big tires, big horsepower, and no mufflers. It's just got to peel out and be awesome. Hey, Fred. Yeah. Fire. Just a small one. I could probably get these tires mounted on my minivan before you're done with this roll bar. I mean, you know, come on. We still need to cut and widen the wheels. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> I like to hang out with you, Frank, because you're positive. I'm positive I'm not riding in this thing. <laughs> What's the worst that's gonna happen to you? <laughs> Break my neck. <laughs> Break it back together? That's true. That actually looks pretty rigid. Oh yeah. If he had a cup holder and a beer, he'd be good. Oh yeah, this is gonna need a cup holder. <laughs> you know, I've built cup holders on this show before. <laughs> so this is the smog canister. It has the charcoal in it. Another fine cup holder project under it every day. <laughs> As night fell on our project and I was just welding up the roll bar, of course, I ran out of welding gas. You know, it's bound to happen after dark when every welding store is closed. So I packed up and decided to call it a day. Yesterday was very successful on our go-kart build. Uh, as we said before, this is our small go-kart. We kind of needed a seat and a roll bar. We've done that. Now we have the spot where the driver will sit. Now we have to work from this point all the way forward to all the controls. I got a lot of stuff to do. I'm gonna call up those guys, the Poly Goats from the Off-Road Club again, see if they can get here. It's already about 11 o'clock Saturday morning. They're a bunch of college kids, so we'll be lucky if they're out of bed before noon. So this is what we need to do to make the go-kart run and drive. It needs steering, it needs brakes, it needs a shifter, throttle, start ignition, wheels, tires. We're gonna rewire the rear fuel pump and clean up the engine, get rid of any extra stuff on there that we don't need. There's one rule to the list. You do not mark off anything on the list until it is done. Otherwise, it doesn't get done.
We are moving right along on our giant go-kart project. The guys are working on the steering. We've been working on getting the wheels and tires put together. We had to use some really crazy wheels that are widened to fit the 16-inch tires, but they needed to have the 10-lug bolt pattern for the rear axle. So that's been a little bit of work. We had spent the whole weekend messing around with our giant go-kart and we're really close to making a drive. But the kids had to get back to school and I had to get back to my day job of writing magazine articles. So even though we could almost taste the first test drive, we decided enough was enough and we'd have to finish it up later. Even with the best neighbors ever, I didn't want to push our luck too much by driving around the neighborhood in the dark with an uncorked big block go-kart. It is morning, really early morning, and we are gonna take our go-kart out some testing today. But first, go-kart to-do list. Um, brakes, we hooked up the brakes with this kind of cable. The shifter is pretty safe. Throttle, sticks, makes it thing kind of dangerous. Steering's done, start ignition's done, wheels, tires. So we're pretty much done with everything. In fact, this marker is also done, so we get rid of that. So we are going to load up the go-kart on this two-car trailer that we borrowed from somebody because it wouldn't fit on a normal trailer. And we're going to put our little go-kart on the back, head up the road, and go have some fun. do today out here at our test facilities, we're going to do a little shootout between our normal size go-kart and our giant man size go-kart. First, let me get my stunt drivers in here. These guys are from the Poly Goats. You can see we got all of our proper safety equipment, gold sparkly helmet, and a seat belt. Excellent, guys. You look great. So, for the first part of our shootout is something that, uh, well, it's something that every go-kart should consider. Every go-kart builder, that is. Gentlemen, how fast can you start your engines? Ready? Go! As you can see, giant go-karts are much better at starting than small go-karts. Keep it up. All right. You lost. Nothing. <laughs> All right, the next part of our competition is the obstacle course. The obstacle course is gonna show us how well each go-kart turns, how fast it is, and how much agility it has. Now the goal here is you wanna start over there at the start finish line. You're gonna go up that little hill, come out here and go around one of these trees, and then loop back around here and go between these two dead cow skulls. Now you only have to go around one tree, so if your vehicle's too big, you might have to go around both trees. But if you're small enough, you probably only have to go around one. Got that? All right, let's go. Mark, get set, go. Point five six seconds. 32 and 56 hundreds of seconds. I don't know. Why 
55.15 seconds. Okay, Motor Trend fans, we know you guys love drag races. We're not really sure why, but the drag race seems to be the race of choice when it comes to the Motor Trend channel. Whenever they're comparing stuff, whenever it's a Lamborghini versus a Ferrari. We've even seen old Jeeps race side by sides. And today, we're gonna have a drag race of epic proportions. A David versus Goliath. A man-sized go-kart versus a little man go-kart. That was an epic trouncing on the small man's go-kart by the big man's go-kart. So, we're gonna do a rematch. This time, you have to start his engine. What? Are you kidding me? Nope, that's the way it's gonna be. We're gonna give him a little bit of a handicap. So, gentlemen. Are you ready? Set, go! Teamwork. That's a good thing about an off-road club. They have teamwork. They can help each other do things. You know, if you get broken down or your, your go-kart doesn't start. You got these other guys in the club to help you out. They got your back. Don't overthink it. Sorry, viewers. This part of the show is kind of boring. There we go. And they're off. Wait. Go! Okay, Polly Goats, there's one more event in our competition. But first, a recap. When we started the competition, there was the how fast could you start your go-kart, the big go-kart one. And then we had the obstacle course, the small go-kart one. Then we had the drag race, the big go-kart one. So now, because you are behind by one point, this next event is winner take all. So you have a chance to win, you have a chance to win, and either of you could lose. Up next, tug of war. Oh yeah. <laughs> Let's do this. Get in your race cars, stunt drivers. All right, that's it for Dirt Every Day. If you've got a motor home at home, you should turn it into a giant go-kart. Just don't tell your mom and dad that we told you so. Giant go-karts, way better than small go-karts. We'll see you in a few weeks.
Final episode, take one. We'll probably be fired after this episode. <laughs>